Specific immunity is the other part of immunity. By, by the way, um, a good way to sum up immunity is self versus non-self. <clears throat> so all of our cells uh, have very specific markers like proteins on them that identify these cells as belonging to us. The only exception is blood, blood cells, red blood cells. Remember how you have like a type A, type B, type O? So that runs a little bit different, but the rest of our cells, they, um, they have very specific proteins. And anything that doesn't have, have this protein, anything that has a different protein on them, are going to get attacked. So when you look at specific immunity, it's going after one specific pathogen. And it's, it's, it, an army is getting built. General immunity, I look at it as being like this. You have police, and, and, and police are very good at um, going after lots of different things, but only on a small scale. Right? But when you have like an army invade you, you can't send the police after them. Right? You have to send your army after their army. Right? But they're only good, our army is only good at attacking one army. So if another army invades, you have to make, you have to train a whole other set of troops to go after that army. All right, so they're really good at going after large numbers of things, but only particular things. Whereas general immunity can go after lots of different things, but very small numbers. So anyway, specific immunity is, there's two parts to it. There's, there's a cell mediated portion. So there's a portion that involves cells. And then there's a portion that involves antibodies. And antibodies are not, um, one, they're not cells, they're just proteins. And two, antibodies don't actually uh, kill cells. You know, they don't actually uh, cause cytolysis, um, but they need each other. The cell-mediated immunity cannot work by itself and neither can the antibody-mediated immunity. So you need both of them. My kid's coming in. I'm going to wave him through. Um, so <clears throat> there's three types of cells involved in this. There's going to be two types of T cells, T4 and T8. T8 cells are going to be involved in the cell-mediated immunity. Sometimes they're called CD8 cells. There's some other names they have, but I'm just calling them T8 cells. B cells are involved in the antibody-mediated immunity. So the B cells are going to ultimately make antibodies. So you have, you have T8 cells, you have B cells, and then in the middle are the T4 cells, which are also called helper T cells. They kind of, um, I see it as like the command and control center. Let me go to the slide. Here we go. All right, so um, kind of a review here. They're all made in the red bone marrow, right? All the lymphocytes are made in the red bone marrow. B cells are going to mature in the red bone marrow. They're, that's why they're called B cells, B for bone. And then T cells are going to migrate to the thymus and mature there. And that's why we call them T for thymus. And T cells are going to, here, right here, all the way to the left, this is cell-mediated immunity. And all the way to the right, this is antibody-mediated immunity. So you see how like it'll B cells, and then at the bottom here, at the end of it, you end up with antibodies. T4 cells, you notice how there's like a line coming out of it or an arrow saying help on both sides. T4 cells <clears throat> stimulate both antibodies and cell-mediated immunity. So without the T4 cells, you can't have either side, right? What before you go and make a bunch of antibodies, the B cells are going to kind of like look over to the T4 cells and get like a confirmation that yes, your body has been invaded by something. Same thing with the T8 cells. Before they start cloning and make a huge army, they're going to look over at the T4 cells, right? And the T4 cells are sending out this chemical saying, yes, there's something going on here. Do your thing. Make your army of T8 cells, make all your antibodies, go ahead. 
Because when you do something like that, it takes a lot of energy, right? I mean, look how we feel. I mean, that's, you know, when we feel like achy joints and all those symptoms, it's really like that's our immune system ramping up, right? So it takes a lot out of us. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want like a false start, right? So on one side, you have cell mediated. On the other side, you have antibody mediated. Helping with both of those, like given the okay, are the helper T cells or, this, or the um, CD4 cells or T4 cells. So that's why HIV is, is, um, is so bad because it goes after, it's a virus that targets T4 cells in particular. And so when you target T4 cells and when you wipe out T4 cells, you're, you're messing up the whole immune system. We can't progress beyond B cells. We can't progress and make these plasma cells and then antibodies. We can't keep going, right? And we can't have our T cells clone. They're waiting. They're all waiting for the helper T cell or the T4 cell. So before we get into that, um, remember antigens are just like proteins. So it's not an entire bacteria or an entire virus that your body is going after. It's only going after a protein that's on the virus. And that's kind of, since we're talking about it, it's in the news and stuff, that's the idea behind a vaccine. I mean, one of the ways that you can deliver a vaccine is, um, well, one way is that you could take the virus and attenuate it, or you can do something to like make it weak, like really weak, and then just give you the virus. And when you get that virus, obviously you're looking at the antigens, the proteins on it, and that's gonna trigger an immune response. Or maybe we can find a way to get some of the proteins off of it and make just the proteins and inject that into you. It's going to have the same effect. So your body's not going after a virus. It's going after a little protein that's on the wall of the virus, right? The antigen. So antigens have to have two characteristics. They have to be, they have to have immunogenicity. So they have to provoke an immune response. And they have to be able to react with the antibody or, or the cell, either way. And so you're like, well, why wouldn't they? Um, well, sometimes, like viruses are really good at this. They'll, they'll have immunogenicity. They'll provoke an immune response. And then they go and they mutate. So they get an immune response. Our body's building this army to go after it. Our army shows up. And they're like, what? What flu? I didn't see a flu. But we just got here. And so that whole army is going to be like, uh, all right. Then you got to start it all over again. The new army gets back and they're like, what? We don't, we know we haven't seen them because they change. They, they change all the time. Right. And then you can, um, you could lack immunogenicity. So you could have reactivity, but not immunogenicity. So that'd be, we call them haptins. So I give you an example. Sometimes when viruses, and not just viruses, um, parasites, there's like worms and other parasites that use this. When they leave our cell, they wrap themselves in our phospholipid bilayer, in our membrane. And when you wrap yourselves in a cell membrane, you also keep all the proteins, you keep all the antigens. So when you look at the pathogen, it doesn't look foreign. So... You have to have both immunogenicity and reactivity, right? And then epitope. An epitope is just a little piece of the, it's, it's not even really the antigen. It's a little piece of the antigen that's provoking the response. And I'll show you how um, that happens, right? So that's kind of the magic. It's, you know, our body does not have to try to memorize millions and millions and maybe billions of different bacteria and different um, viruses and stuff. That's very difficult to do. We're just memorizing little pieces. And so that becomes a lot easier, right? It'd be like an army. Okay, memorize what 100,000 people look like. How are you gonna do that? Instead you say, okay, memorize that uniform. Right? And, that, and that's what it's like. Or you just say, memorize a flag. And that flag, go after it. So that's much, much easier. That's kind of like what an antigen is. Don't know why I included that. So 
MHC molecules, major histocompatibility molecules, or antigens, they sit on top of, well, on top of our membrane or they're embedded in our membrane. It depends on what kind of cells, right? So um, MHC1 molecules, they're built in for the most part. They're built into our cells. Right. And so most of our cells have these MHC molecules. They're very particular. They're just for us. It, it, and, and so MHC2 molecules are on these special cells called antigen presenting cells. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So those are special cells that are involved in your immune reaction. But most of the rest of our cells have these, except for red blood cells, have these um, MHC1 molecules like built into our plasma membrane. And so that's how we can differentiate ourselves from everything else. So for an immune process to happen, in order to trigger our immune system, we have to know that we've been infected. And so how do we do that? Well, you have to recognize the pathogen. B cells are okay at recognizing pathogens. T cells they're very good killers, not so good at recognizing antigens or pathogens. So what has to happen is you have to have a certain type of cell called an antigen presenting cell. It has to take the antigen off of the, um, off of the pathogen, it has to take that little protein off, and it has to like walk up to a T8 cell and say, hey, T8 cell, look, this right here, this is your enemy. Right, you, that, that's, you have to go to that extent. Then the T8 cells start to get all worked up and you know, triggered. <coughs> so, I'm be spreading corona all over the computer. So, here we are. This whole thing here in yellow is a cell. Right, so it's an antigen presenting cell. It's just what the name says. It's going to present the antigen. And so look here, pretend this thing, look over here on the left that I'm kind of circling. It's got like the spiral thing with the shapes, the triangle and stuff like that. Let's pretend that's a bacteria. All right. And so what this antigen presenting cell is going to do, it's going to engulf that bacteria. It's going to eat it. And so here is that bacteria. It's engulfed it, and it's ripping it apart. So that's what antigen-presenting cells do. They, they go after pathogens, infective cells, and they take it in, phagocytize it, rip it apart, and they're making MHC2 molecules that they're going to put on their membrane. It kind of sits on top of the membrane, but anyway, they're making MHC molecules, but you see what's going on here? So the green part is their MHC molecule that they're making, but they're sticking antigens, they're sticking proteins from the bacteria. They're incorporating that into their MHC molecule. So there it is on the end, and they display that on their cell wall. It's not a cell wall, it's like a plasma membrane, but you know, you get the point. And so when and then, and then they go up to like uh, T8 cells, like a certain T8 cells are going to recognize it. Oh, wait a minute. I see that maroon colored, colored square. That's an enemy, you know, and everything. Okay, fine. I get it. I see it there and I'm going to make an army. Everything with that red square or red triangle, I'm going to kill it. Right. And so those TA cells, they're not going to get activated until they see this antigen presenting cell. They've got to see this MHC2 molecule. Then that gets them, that gets them all worked up, right? And so that's one part. So if we're looking here, where are we? Antigen presenting cell. Um, you know what? This, this slide's going to be better. Let me go back. Okay, so the T8 cells, they see the antigen from the antigen presenting cells. Now they're getting all worked up. They want to start cloning. They want to build their army. So the first stimulus that gets them worked up 
is the antigen presenting cell. The second stimulus is a chemical. This chemical is called interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 that comes from the helper T cell. So you need both those stimulations. You need the antigen presenting cell to present the antigen. Then you need the um, interleukin-2 from the helper T cells. I know it's kind of like a lot of stuff, and actually I'm trying to uh, simplify it. So under those two stimulations, stimuli, they're going to clone and become like killer T cells are called. They, they have different names, killer T cells, um, killer T8 cells, cytotoxic T cells, however you want to call it. Think back to the natural killer cells. I talked about two chemicals. Um, wow, so the moment, perforin and granzymes. All right, remember the perforin punches holes, causes cytolysis, and granzymes induce apoptosis, cell suicide. Killer T cells use the exact same weapons. So they've got the same weapons. They're like natural killer cells in that they fight in natural. That's for general immunity. So they're only good at killing a few general things. These killer T8 cells are specific immunity. So they're going after one thing, but like they're playing, you know, there's millions of them, millions and millions against millions. Right, so that's what they do. That's cell-mediated immunity. It works kind of like the natural killer cells. It uses granzymes, it uses uh, perforin, and it confronts the pathogens directly and tries to kill them. Antibody, so that's cell-mediated immunity. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm showing you here the two stimuli. It must have, um, where are we going here? Well, I'm not telling you. So the first, the first stimulation is the antigen presenting cell. The stim second stimulation is interleukin two. So that's what I have here, and that comes from the T4 cells. Then they clone to become cytotoxic T cells, aka cytotoxic T8 cells. Antigen. I'm sorry. Um, antibody mediated immunity works in a different way. Antibodies are different. They're not living. They're just protein. Proteins. They don't kill cells, but they, they make it really hard for pathogens to move around and to exist. And so I'll, I'll, I'll show you what they do. So it starts off with, with B cells. B cells also recognize this MHC2 complex this antigen presenting cell thing, right? They recognize it and the B cells start to get all worked up too. Okay, yeah, we're gonna start going. And, but they need that second stimulation from the T4 cells, the interleukin-2. So once they get both of those stimulations, they're going to become plasma cells and they're gonna start cloning into plasma cells. Plasma cells are gonna secrete antigen. So kind of the same things stimulate B cells and T8 cells, but the result is they're different, right? The, the T8 cells are going to become like cytotoxic or killer T cells, and the, um, the B cells are going to become plasma cells, and the plasma cells are going to secrete antibodies. And this is my last slide on this. So these are functions of antibodies, right? Ne neutralizing antigens. So blocking viruses, that's a very important. If the viruses can't attach to our cells, that's the end of them. So that's great. They need to get into our cell to work. So blocking viral attachment, blocking bacterial toxins. You know, bacteria, that's what makes us sick with bacteria is the toxins they produce. You know, bacteria... Um, they, they, they have metabolism like ours, you know, they, 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 they take in food, they process it, and then they get rid of their waste. 
Right? So that waste, that's the toxins, and that's what makes us sick. So they neutralize antigens, they immobilize bacteria. Bacteria use um, not so much flagella, they do use cilia. And that's one of the problems with um, defeating bacteria. They move around. They can. That's one of the many things that is so difficult about bacteria, that they move around. So chop their legs off. They can't get around. Makes it much easier for um, killer T cells to do their job. And then you can together. Cluster them, group them, and then send up a flag. How much easier is the job of a killer T cell now? Right? You don't have to go and look for each bacteria. They're like in a they're in a group. And then you just look all the way across, you just look for the flags that go up. Oh, flag, there's a group of of legless bacteria. So much easier to kill them. But the antibodies aren't actually doing the killing. They're just making it so easy to kill, right? So they enhance, they enhance phagocytosis. They're, they're, the way that antibodies are shaped, the, the stem region looks like a, like, it's like a flag, right? They cluster them, agglutinize pathogens together. They uh, stop bacteria from moving around and they neutralize antigens. So that is a really, Although it, it might have confused you, but it was a really quick uh, version of um, a really quick version of um, specific immunity. So you know, even though you have this video, definitely look over the PowerPoint. Um, definitely look at other videos. There's much better videos that do that do a great job at this. Um, I like Crash Course, Khan Academy. That's just me though. You know, do whatever, and don't forget to read. So, you know, this is one of those chapters that you still have to kind of follow up. You, you should look through the book. Um, and I always say this, but if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me anytime.